Welcome to the West Wing Week, your guide to everything that's happening at 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. This week, the President celebrated St. Patrick's Day alongside the Prime Minister of Ireland, continued to work toward a diplomatic resolution to the conflict in Ukraine, hosted Palestinian President Abbas, awarded 24 Medals of Honor, and traveled to Florida to speak on the importance of supporting working families. That's March 14th to March 20th, or 24 soldiers. Because every one is a story of bravery that deserves to be told. How you doing? I'm Officer Chris Buffalini with U.S. Capitol Police uh, Ceremony Unit, Bagpiper. We're here at the U.S. Capitol today honoring uh, the Taoiseach of Ireland and Mr. Boehner and welcoming the President for the Friends of Ireland. Thanks, Chris. Later back at the White House, the President and Prime Minister joined the First Lady and Vice President for a St. Patrick's Day reception. Once again, today is not technically St. Patrick's Day. <laughs> and once again, None of you seem particularly bothered by this. <laughs> At least you'll have a weekend to recover. Afterwards, the president hosted Prime Minister Kenny's children for an impromptu visit of the Oval Office, with a few stops along uh, the way. Because up until Teddy Roosevelt's time, the White House was just this. And so oh. Abraham Lincoln would have meetings inside this building. They didn't have a separate office. Monday morning, the denizens of our nation's capital woke up to yet another heavy snowfall, courtesy of Mother Nature who has surely enjoyed piling it on this year. The president started the day with a statement on the latest events in Ukraine. Today I'm announcing a series of measures that will continue to increase the costs on Russia and on those responsible for what is happening in Ukraine. Going forward, we can calibrate our response based on whether Russia chooses to escalate or to de-escalate the situation. Then, the president hosted Palestinian President Mahmoud Abbas for a bilateral meeting in the Oval Office to continue the important work of finding a path to comprehensive and lasting peace between the Palestinians and the Israelis. In three, two, one. All right, Mr. President, we're here yet again for the annual Barakatology. On Tuesday, the president talked about his choices for the annual NCAA men's and women's basketball tournament brackets. Bracketology, baby. Later that day, the president awarded 24 Army veterans the Medal of Honor for conspicuous gallantry in World War II, the Korean War, and the Vietnam War. This is the single largest group of service members since World War II, with all but three being conferred posthumously. Ladies and gentlemen, it is very rare where we have the opportunity to reflect on the extraordinary courage and patriotism of such a remarkable collection of men. It makes us proud and it makes us inspired. I would ask all those who have witnessed this extraordinary day uh, to please rise and give these latest recipients of the Medal of Honor uh, your warmest applause. On Wednesday, the president hosted a screening of the upcoming film Cesar Chavez about the labor leader who co-founded the National Farm Workers Association with Dolores Huerta. Before going on, he greeted some of the cast and crew. The president then shared some reflections with a gathering of people who are about to screen the movie. Part of what sustains me and part of what I've said in the past, and some of you who've been in meetings with me and uh, when we, we've experienced setbacks or frustrations on particular issues, uh, I've tried to remind people, change is hard. It doesn't happen easily. Uh, it doesn't happen smoothly or painlessly. It happens because you put your shoulder behind the wheel and you keep on pushing. And then sometimes it, it's going to roll back a little bit on you. And then you got to dig in and you got to push some more. And Cesar Chavez understood that. As I be and mic him up. That evening, the president beamed into the Ellen Show for an interview from the Blue Room of the White House. And we'll say, uh, we, we all got matching tattoos. And then I suspect that'll be a pretty good deterrent for both uh, Malia and Sasha. You should place to also get a tattoo with us. On Thursday morning, the president went to the South Lawn of the White House to deliver a statement to White House reporters about additional sanctions being placed on the Russians in response to ongoing events in Ukraine. Diplomacy between the United States and Russia continues. Uh, we've emphasized that Russia still has a different path available, one that de-escalates the situation and, and one that involves Russia pursuing a diplomatic solution with the government in Kiev. After his statement, the president turned and boarded Marine One to begin his trip to Florida. In Orlando, the president participated in a roundtable with a group of Valencia College students and local workers. He then spoke on the challenges these groups face and the steps the administration can continue to take to expand economic opportunity for women and working families all across America. Yeah, they're just such amazing stories of the women that I talked with before I came out here. Every one of them, at some point, had made a major sacrifice on behalf of their families. One woman had a severely autistic son, took 12 years off to raise her three kids, including this son, before now going back to school, 
and being able to teach once again. That's what built this country, those kinds of sacrifices. And we've got to make sure that we as a country are helping people who are so courageous and so brave and working so hard. All those moms and grandmas and young women like Carolyn who are trying to start their own businesses. Back in D.C., it was the women's turn to geek out as the White House hosted a We the Geeks Google Hangout, focusing on women role models in science, technology, engineering, and math. And remember, to find out more information on any of these topics or to see complete videos of these events, go to whitehouse.gov. And thanks again for checking out your West Wing Week. Now, who do you play? I play Dolores Berta. Oh, fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, you're all taller than her. Yes, I am. Where's Dolores? She's out She's there. She's outside, yeah, with, with her mom. What do you mean, a touch? Dolores is like 4'10". Oh, She's tough, though. Yes, she is. Yeah. So I can see the fire. If we don't have organization, we don't have a voice, we don't have representation, and we have to make our influence felt. But we can't do it unless we get out there and actually work at it.